Welcome back everyone, and today I want to talk about pushing in as a cruiser. It is possible, and it's actually a very valuable skill to know in World of Warships. I think everyone's been there where you're playing a cruiser, and your battleships are camping the back of the map. And it's frustrating because you know the game could be won if they just pushed in, and you would go in and support them. But if we stay at the back and camp it out, it's more than likely you're gonna lose the game. And, well, a cruiser can actually lead the charge. And that's what we're gonna do in today's video. I got two Hindenburg games for you. Both actually go pretty well. The second one much better than the first, as we're gonna see in a little bit. But I notice that we need to push this flank. The enemy team doesn't really have much presence on the one, two, three lines, as you can see. And if we don't get control of this A flank, well, the enemy team is gonna push through C they're going to get a hold of the really good islands around the B cap. It's going to be very difficult for us to push back the B cap from the A cap. So it's crucial we start going, and that's what we're going to do here. It's very, very important, though, that you know what is on your flank. There's a few ships that haven't been spotted yet that are pretty scary, like the uh, Annapolis, for example. Uh, but we haven't seen him yet, and I do think that if he was on this flank, he would have shot at me already. And of course, there's a couple of destroyers as well. But crucially, we're pushing along the map border. We're pushing along the flank. This means that I have a safe angle no matter what. If I get into trouble here, there is a risky turnout that I need to do. But at most, I'm exposing myself to this John Bart, maybe the Kearsarge, right? As soon as I turn out and get my broadside facing towards the border, I'm not broadside to anyone anymore. I'm well angled and I can retreat if I need to. But this flank is very, very important. As you can see, it gets us an incredibly good angle on this gearing. And since our Plymouth has pushed up mid, it's a pretty dangerous position, it's very important that he does not get flanked from this one, two, three line. Me being here enables that Plymouth to play that position and feel relatively safe. So getting these angles, getting these crossfires is very important in winning flanks. Obviously, I could not have done this push if the enemy team had more of a presence on the 1, 2, 3 line. Let's say a cruiser goes to the island at D2, D3. That's going to be very difficult for me to deal with because then I'm more than likely in a crossfire between the Jean Bart and this cruiser. Um, as we see, since my Hydro is up, there's some Torps on the way, and there's now a Plymouth. So we're in a bad spot. <laughs> and how do we deal with this? We deal with this calmly. We're not actually going to um, turn out here. We're actually going to continue pushing. It's just going to be a little bit slower. And we need to make sure we stay angled reasonably well to the Plymouth and the Jean Bart. It's also important to know that the Jean Bart can't overmatch us. Hindenburg has 30 millimeters of armor most places, and in other areas it is 27. More than enough to auto bounce the Jean Bart, assuming we have good enough angles. The unfortunate thing is this Plymouth has very much improved armor piercing, like the Minotaur for example. This uh, The AP really hurts on from the Plymouth, it's just not got the best reload. And here's the issue, Plymouth smokes up and he's going to get good spotting from the gearing. So it's really, really tough times here for the Hindenburg. But this ship is surprisingly tanky in these scenarios. You'll notice me constantly checking where the Jean Bart is, and you'll notice the Jean Bart is turning out. Jean Bart has no turrets in the back, so I can actually make this turn relatively safely. I know the Jean Bart basically can't shoot me here, so I'm okay to be broadside to him and full charge in on this Plymouth. I have several battleships kind of backing me up, so I know if I get this guy spotted, he's probably going to go down. All I need to do is get within his uh, firing, smoke firing detection range. As the Jean Bart is turning around, I do need to be aware of his uh, potential firing at me, and with the Plymouth opening up, and secondaries actually on me, I can actually get some blind shots in. And that is the dangerous thing about these smoke cruisers. At a certain range, it's pretty easy to get reliable blind fire. You'll notice I got nine overpens there. I was a little too high on the aim, but as we get closer and my aim gets a little better, we can actually blind fire this guy in smoke. And now with our hydro popping up, well, there he is. And we've taken him down to like 19,000 HP already. And I'm only down to half health. 
Hindenburg also gets the excellent ability to actually have five heals. Not many cruisers get that, and uh, it's one of the absolute strengths of Hindenburg is the ability to take damage early on and heal it back in the later game. So I'm okay with taking these positions. And you'll notice I've stopped again, and I'm putting up my plane to hopefully spot this Plymouth. This island to my right is crucial for this push to work out, since it protects me from the torpedoes that could be coming from the gearing, and also maybe some shots from the Kearsarge. I'm lucky though that my teammates were able to uh, take out the Jean Bart, that really, really helped me a lot. And as we're gonna continue here, I take out the Plymouth, and we've pushed this flank out. And this has really helped our team have a good chance into this game. You'll notice the 910 line, the sea cap, it's completely fallen, like I talked about earlier in this video. But we've taken the initiative on A, and this has allowed us to hopefully face and take out some of the enemy team as they're trying to get into their strong positions in the B cap. The other crucial thing that this flank does is it distracts the enemy. It's really important though that I stay alive for as long as possible, otherwise the distraction isn't all that effective. You'll notice those second set of torpedoes obviously didn't come from the gearing since the gearing is off to my right. So what could that possibly be? Well, there was a Yamagiri last spotted in the middle at low health. So he probably went to the back of the map to try and deal with our flanking push. And that's exactly what has happened in this game. The Yamagiri, I believe, is on the A-line <laughs> and trying to torp me out. So as our Hydro is running out here, this is going to be the end of my game. These torpedoes coming in are going to hurt me quite a lot. But still, I do think this was a very successful push. It was very risky, but it happened to work out since our team was able to push through and get through these uh, stalling ships at the A cap soon enough that we can actually take up pretty good defensive positions at B. And this game actually, I believe, ended in a win, but uh, I backed out after <laughs> dying to these torpedoes, so I didn't actually watch the end of it. But even if we lost, uh, this was an excellent push, and I think a great example of what at least Hindenburg is capable of doing. The ship doesn't have a radar, it doesn't really have that battle impact outside of damage dealing, and a little bit of tanking. And that's why I really like playing Hindenburg on a flank. And that's what we're gonna do in this one as well. I talk about uh, flanking being very important in this game. And having a cruiser that can do that is so, so, so valuable. And one of the best parts about the Hindenburg, the ship is so flexible that it can play the very meta-defining battleship farmer role. <laughs> it's very, very strong at farming battleships with HE. But equally strong is Hindenburg on a flank. This armor piercing is pretty deadly, and since this ship really doesn't have that much of a citadel, it's got a bit of turtle back protecting it, it's basically an all-round cruiser. It's good at close range, it's good at medium range, it's good at long range, it's good at kiting, it's good at pushing. So that's what I like about the Hindenburg. It allows me to play very different positions. Whatever basically my team needs out of me, that's what I can do. And in this game, again, you're going to notice that we have quite a few battleships coming to this flank, and they're going to get stalled up around these islands in the D8 area. This is very, very common. I myself, as a battleship player, often do this as well. I get stalled out thinking that, ah, oh, just because I'm able to shoot at things, I'm helping my team, right? Well, sometimes pressure needs to be applied. And you'll notice in this game, again, the enemy team doesn't have much presence on the 8, 9, 10 lines. Their battleships and Hipper there are pushing away. The Missouri is caught too far in, and we've actually got control of the sea cap. We do see that it's being contested though, so there's probably an enemy DD around. But again, the position, the criteria is right for a flank. The enemy team really don't have much presence here, like I said, and crucially, we're going to gain a massive positional advantage in this game, assuming we execute this flank properly. And last of all, the distraction that I'm going to provide um, and hopefully bait the enemy team into is really going to help our team win this game. So even though our battleships are kind of stalling out around that D8 square like I talked about, me pushing this flank opens up a lot of possibilities for them to push in relatively confidently. That's something that as a battleship player, knowing that a flank is relatively secured, you're not going to get torped from an angle that you're not expecting it, that kind of thing, 
It's really, really valuable information that allows a battleship player to play a little more confidently. So me being in this position certainly helps my battleships have the hopefully ability to push in. They won't always do it, but you'll notice I'm playing not a hard charging pushing role all the time. It's really important to play this hit and run style as well. In the last game, I obviously didn't quite play it correctly and ended up dying as a result. This one, I learned from my mistakes in that first one and we've turned out, we're kiting away a little bit. And then as we see the enemy team ready to kite away and turn out themselves, then we can re-engage our push. It's really important to get used to playing on this knife's edge, this balancing act of playing aggressively enough to distract the enemy team, to get them to focus on you, but not so much that you're gonna die. And uh, obviously the first game didn't quite go so well, but this one, I do a really, really, really good job of that. And that's why I wanted to show this game next. As we're pushing up though, there's really not a lot going on here. And that's because the enemy team has basically given up C for free outside of their enemy, outside the enemy DD, which we do see some torpedoes from already. And I do have to be a little bit careful since I don't have a hydro yet. But since I spotted the one set of torps there, I'm not too worried pushing around this island just yet. We will have to worry about torps in maybe 30 seconds or so. So after 30 seconds, you're gonna see me start to make a few more maneuvers. But for now, I'm trying to get to this next island. I talk about islands a lot in Brawling Battleships, but it's equally useful for all ship classes, destroyers, cruisers as well. Pushing into ships is tough in open water, but having these islands as checkpoints is so, so, so useful. And you can see just what this angle I've opened up does. The enemy ships are one by one charging into B and dying. <laughs> and I'm really not doing a ton of damage to them, but having to worry about me on an extra angle here I think is helping. And we're gonna notice that as the we push around this corner and that Stalingrad might start focusing us. As I said, in a few seconds, we're gonna have to worry about torpedoes. I will admit I got a little bit lucky with these. He probably put those torps right on the gray line and I turned out to try and get around this island a little quicker. So maybe not the most calculated torpedo dodge, but I'll take it at this point. And now that the Freddy is kind of stuck in his base, there's really not much need for me to push any further here. Pushing hard here is only gonna get me killed. I'll get caught between a Freddy, a Destroyer, and a Stalingrad. That is a rough position to be in. We're doing enough here by distracting the Freddy and distracting the enemy Destroyer. And my battleships are still in that D8 square. <laughs> Just to point it out. So they're not always gonna follow you. And that's okay. It's still going to be a successful push if you can play it correctly. And we're kiting away at this point. We're not applying too much pressure since there's an enemy ship focused on us. That's the key here. As long as we're playing in a safe position, getting the enemy team's attention away from the gaps, away from our ships that are actually going to win the game. For example, our Holland, our Neptune, um, maybe our Ognavoy who's going over to the A cap, that kind of thing. These guys that are contesting capture zones, holding capture zones, they are the ones that we want to be distracting the enemy team away from. This Freddy could be going after my Neptune if the Neptune is spotted, for example, but instead he's focused on me. That's the idea behind this flank. So even though I'm not completely focused on the cap objectives, it's a really valuable position to take, assuming you're providing a good enough distraction. And that's what I really do like about this game is playing these alternate ways and having it work out. Uh, it's a bit risky, certainly, to play open water against, for example, a Holland. Uh, that torpedo reload and speed is pretty devastating. But we managed to dodge most of his torpedo salvos so far and our Hydro helps us out with this next one. And since he just torped, well, we know Holland is gonna get his torps back up in around, what, 70, 80 seconds or so. Unfortunately, we're not going to have a Hydro for that, but we do have the ability to just play bow into him. That's really a basic way to dodge torpedoes. If you don't really have an idea of when they're coming, just try to play bow into wherever the enemy torps you think are going to come from. 
And you'll notice this Stalingrad has instantly started targeting us again once we get around this island and we get some, he can get some free shots into us. This is why I didn't want to push earlier because having a Freddy, a Holland, and a Stalingrad all on me would have probably spelled my death. But I'm pushing in again now since the enemy team has retreated enough and are more than likely focusing on the crucial enemy ships on my team. The Stalingrad, for example, pushing into the B cap, trying to fight my friendly teammates who are the ones contesting caps. Well, I wanna push in and get into that fight and help things out a little bit again. So that's kind of this balancing act where you wanna push in, not so aggressive you die, but don't be so passive that you just allow the enemy team to focus out the key ships on your team and win the game while you're being kind of useless on a flank. And you'll notice the pressure I'm applying is enough to bait the Stalingrad into shooting me again, even though there's low health battleships and cruisers around where he is and he's in a very high pressure situation, he still ends up shooting at the Hindenburg on the flank. That's a perfect bait there to distract the enemy ships. But since there's a Zhao coming, there's a gearing around and there's a Holland, I need to be a little bit concerned about torpedoes and dying here. Fighting a Zhao, especially if he's kiting and I'm pushing into him, is a bad idea. Zhao's HE really hurts and we're gonna see that here. But you'll notice the angle I'm kind of taking here. I'm trying to take an angle to where the Holland in front of me, my friendly ship, is going to spot out the enemy gearing's torpedoes if the gearing torped at me. That early warning is gonna be so valuable for the eventual turnout that I'm going to need to do because I can't continue pushing into a Zao. That's just not a reliable way to win games, not at all. So after popping my Hydro and we spot the Holland's next set of torpedoes, well, time to turn out. That's the easiest way to do things since we know there's multiple ships here focused on us and our team now has an overwhelming advantage in the middle of the map. You'll notice the, well, encirclement essentially that my team has done of the remaining enemy ships around the AB area. And I'm still distracting two of the enemy ships by myself here. This frees up my Holland to chase the gearing and my team to get into the caps. Flanking is so, so, so powerful in this game. Assuming you can play that knife's edge balancing act to be useful and not die too quickly. And of course, at the end of the game here, we end up actually getting some pretty good damage. So even though we didn't play the caps, we didn't actually get to farm battleships, the damage output has been pretty solid as well. And this last salvo is pretty lucky, I'll admit it, <laughs> but Hindenburg AP definitely hurts, especially if you get the right dispersion. <laughs> So this game ended up in 167,000 damage, a really, really solid result, especially considering I wasn't uh, kiting away enemy battleships, farming them down. I was the one pushing in and still got that damage. And I think this flank was very, very valuable in this game and really helped our team win. As for my Hindenburg build, it is a bit of a just standard tank build. I'm getting Superintendent for the extra healing and Hydros, I'm taking Survivability Expert to boost my HP even further, getting more value out of this reasonably tanky cruiser that can be a bit of a jack of all trades. Concealment Expert, super crucial for being able to play those flanks, potentially go dark and turn out safely. Adrenaline Rush is still very useful on this ship. You'll notice I'm also taking Eye in the Sky. This is really down to running Reload Mod plus the uh, Spotter Planes and having spotter planes more often is very useful for a ship that doesn't quite have the range and needs to rely on spotter planes. Since I'm playing range mod in these games though, it's not really the most useful. Could probably get more value out of like even demo expert for example. Gun feeder is truly excellent on a ship like Hindenburg where the HE and the armor piercing are both really, really good. I'm actually saving up to gain top grade gunner with this commander, only level 19, so need to wait another level yet but that'll be very useful for those brawling situations where I need a little bit better reload. Might even go for uh, grease the gears. Having good, better turret traverse is quite nice, especially if you end up taking reload mod and then having, uh, well, having your turret traverse nerfed by 13% uh, can be a bit of a bummer on this ship. But uh, for now, I am running range because the meta is pretty passive, but 
if you're a very aggressive player, I think the uh, the reload mod can be a lot of fun as well. But those are the upgrades that I'm wanting to use on the Hindenburg. But it really is a jack of all trades ship. You can really do a lot of things. And you'll notice that I am actually taking some of the uh, uh, fire flags as well. And crucially, the heal flag. I think that's a very important detail that I don't talk about very often. I take heal flag on anything with a heal. It's such a valuable tool to maintain your ship throughout a game. And having an extra 20% of healing per heal is massive and uh, can definitely help you win games when you need to just barely stay alive. But uh, Hindenburg is really an excellent ship, a great all-rounder, and uh, I think flanking can be a very good tool as a cruiser player. It's not just battleships, not just destroyers. Cruisers can flank incredibly well, assuming you're playing in that sweet spot, that comfort zone of distracting the enemy team, but not going so far in as to die and be useless to your team. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.